Well, hello, glue troopers, and welcome back to the Tarvis. So, uh, I'm getting ready to wrap up for the night. I've been working mostly on the caterum, but tonight I have some information, stories to tell, some techniques to talk about, and we got a couple of deliveries. Uh, some boxes showed up. Um, one I opened, actually got it last night after I made the video. I, I didn't get around to make a morning video because, you know, stuff. And uh, so I'm going to talk about that tonight. And I'm also going to talk about this other box that just showed up, which I have opened but not really looked in. So all kinds of cool stuff and we'll be surprised together. So the first thing, uh, just a real quick, I, I tapped on this before, but just to, in case you didn't see the last video I did, uh, yes, the live stream was taken down or blocked, disabled because of, even though I used a karaoke version of Radar Love by Golden Earring, the company apparently had the rights and, and they blocked it. So uh, <laughs> I guess even using karaoke versions, you know, uh, my wife and I are actually uh, talking about maybe having uh, Eduardo, who did the uh, intro song for me. Maybe he's just going to have to start writing me some more original music if he wants to. So, anywho. Uh, that being said, the caterum has gotten to the point where now it's really starting to get tough to work on. I did make a lot of progress on it. I had to take a few parts off because it's getting to the parts in the rear undercarriage and the suspension that are so complicated that it's really easy to get something upside down or backwards, despite the excellent to me instructions. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it, and it, uh, if you decide to build one of these kits, uh, or something that screws together like this. I'm going to recommend doing something I didn't do. I did put this, there are BA screws and BB screws. That's how they're identified. They come in two separate bags, an A bag and a B bag. Why they're designated that way, no idea. But each of them has about six different types of screws. And one of the things I'm going to recommend is, is that you very carefully isolate each one in a separate cup. And just instead of putting the A bag in one cup and the B bag in another cup like I did, because I spent a lot of time flipping back and forth in the instruction and put a legend up in front of it because I spent a lot of time flipping back and forth trying to make sure I have the right screw. Uh, now I've kind of learned which one switched to the point that it's, it's going a little quicker. But um, it is an impressive kit, but there are a couple of things that didn't quite fit right for the real axle shafts are a little short. And I'm not sure that's not like Tamiya, but I checked. Everything's right. Uh, I mean, they kind of reach, but not... I, I, might, I might cut some new ones out of stock styrene. But uh, not, I mean, yeah, first world problems, right? I mean, it's still a great kit. But it's almost starting to look like a car now and got the interior in it. They, and they give you a piece of sticky cloth, which is, by the way, not the exact same size as the uh, um, actual floor panels, which is not uncommon. I tried to stretch it, but it just won't stretch that far. So I had to decide if I wanted the gap up top or down low. And on the back piece, I decided up top because down low it would be a gap between the uh, um, tunnel transmission tunnel you know, the shaft tunnel and and the uh and it figured it was better to have all that state black and just have one uniform uh metal piece showing at the top but anyway uh they do have painting instructions as you go to paint a lot of the details but most of the stuff's molded pretty close to in color so i haven't really messed with any that so far i'm trying to just focus on building it but uh it, it's it's moving along probably tomorrow i'll get to work on the actual uh, power plant uh the engine and the uh, DC3. Now, story time. You guys may have noticed I've rearranged the Tarvis a little bit to make some more shelf space. Uh, and <laughs> I unplugged my uh, stereo that I often play music in here with. Um, <laughs> and I made sure all the cables were loose and everything. I could move it very carefully. And of course, as I moved one of the speakers, that they have these just these little micro adapters on the back and sure enough if one of them didn't snag just like an anchor and pluck the speaker right out of my hand and drop straight on the table and hit the dc3 uh it's fortunately all it did was split it down the seam which just tells me the halves weren't glued together well enough but luckily that was the only impact so i had to glue everything back together that set me back a little bit but but that actually segues into the next thing uh Chuck sent me uh, some tools and uh, he said uh, he sent me a packing list, but the tools included uh, these uh, the pin vices and some uh, a pin vice set and some uh, saw blades, some styrene, a thin styrene that he uses instead of gap sealing. He actually sent me some pictures of it and um, 
the also some polish for the uh, canopies which i've never actually polished a canopy of that stuff it'll be interesting and he sent a letter and i'm just going to read real quick um uh, he he doesn't uh like using putty if he doesn't have to he likes to put like uh uh point uh oh two oh uh, strips of styrene in and razor them down makes a nice gap filler and you, we all know how fragile the putty is. You know, it cracks or breaks if you flex the model, whereas the styrene actually has some structural, I would imagine, some structural stability to it. it can help toughen up the model. But he says that he uses the styrene as a gap filler. And uh, along with, uh, well, uh, let's see, uh, he uses uh, sheet styrene as a gap filler along with the welder cuts way down on putty and sanding. You need a really sharp knife to do this correctly, and that's why he sent me this diamond sharpener. Um, use the 17 degree angle and you'll easily get uh, uh, 10x uh, or, or 10 times the life out of the uh, typical number 10 blade. Uh, the other angles work well on other knives. A honing edge can actually improve cutting on a scissor blade uh, with a little practice. This, the trick is the edge. Uh, it's actually an insanely thin edge of two blades. A few strokes about 11 degrees along that edge and the blade sharpen up nicely. So that's into sharpening. Uh, once the welder set, run the tip of the blade along the joint, the shallow angle will score the plastic sheet and snap it off. Well, that works. And any irregularities can be addressed with the appropriate micro chisel. Uh, use the chisel like a microplane, shaving off material. These chisels also work great for shaving down putty fills once they've been completely hardened. Uh, they're sharp enough, they almost polish the putty and can result uh, in a little of no sanding. Uh, okay, usually about a thousand or eight hundred grit. The micro saw blade is incredible at making insanely thin cuts. Um, he often uses it to de-sprue his stuff. Uh, lastly, the, the, the rubbing compound for the canopies. The pen vices have the advantage and disadvantage of not requiring changing the chuck, depending on, so I have a bunch of pen vice bits and no handles for them until now, so that's great, I appreciate that. Um, and he gave me some uh, styrene. He also sent some pictures, and this is, I believe, from his B25 for the uh, group build, and you see how he did it. And so I'm trying it on the DC3. Uh, I've got some gaps that were almost made for this kind of uh, thing, and uh, given especially how fragile it's shown it was after it split, I figured, you know what, it can this can only be an improvement. So I'm going to try this and see how it works, and I'm sure it'll take a little practice, but you know what, we're gonna make it work. But that, that's a cool technique. And I, and I appreciate that, Chuck, and I appreciate the tools very much. I can certainly use them and will. In fact, well, I'm effectively using them now. Um, so now on to the next thing. Uh, Ed North of 56 sent me a box and uh, from all the way up in Canada. And he sent a letter which I have not seen and I will now read. Uh, Max, finally found the kits that were supposed to go to you in the spring when we were fighting World War I air battles. Uh, due to our move, they went missing in action. Uh, the book Phantom Major is a true story of SAS and desert rats in North Africa. Uh, DVDs might be useful when you're adding background music to your viewers' builds, unless, of course, they are copyrighted. <laughs> we'll find out, I guess. I'll probably try to use them. Uh, and... Uh, since our move in the summer, uh, other life goes on moments. I've not been able to do any model building. Thank goodness for your show. That keeps me sane. Hope you uh, get in on the. I hope to get in on the car build. Ed North of fifty six. P.S. I think I got all the gravy stains off the tie. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Well, let's see what's in here. Okay. Ah. The book Bremen: The Fascinating Story of the First East-West Flight Across the North Atlantic and it's landing on a remote Canadian island in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. All right, I love books about early aviation. Lancaster, the greatest bombers, a DVD. Lancaster, got a link up here somewhere. I'm gonna build it one of these days. Let's see. Okay, do some packing material. Make sure I'm not overlooking anything. All right, here we go, here are them. Some kit models. Let's see. With another note. Let me just ease that down there. Max, due to the high rate of requests from the Royal Flying Corps for SOP with camels, the Ministry of Supply has authorized several under ma other manufacturers to produce the camel. J.J. Smithers, <laughs> Department of Supply, DOABS with bar <laughs> SOP. <laughs> Okay, we've got uh, the Ravel 172nd scale camel. And, oh, an old Kielcraft. I've 
And I'll have to look up the history on this kit because uh, I know I've heard of them. I'm pretty sure I have, but I don't know anything about them. This looks like quite the vintage kit. In fact, you know what? I'll wait till I learn the history on this before I make any decisions. And from Roden, the Sopwith F1 Camel, the Trench Fighter. And this one has the Lewis gun above. So, Roden. And we have, oh, some beautiful artwork. P80 Shooting Star. These are laminated. And Lo, Udet's Bright uh, D7. And here we have Greatest Original War Movie Themes, uh, DVD, CDs, uh, Glorious Victory, Victory at Sea. They're great war themes. All right. Musica. <laughs> An airplane tie. The Pocketbook of Aircraft. And some more books. Here is uh, The Phantom Major, but uh, SAS. Britain 1940. The RAF fights last year against the Luftwaffe. It shows a downed 109 pilot. And uh, this, of course, has a lot of uh, information on all of the aircraft people and some actually pretty impressive artwork. Great resource. And the Mighty Eighth in color, Hate Air Force. Well, Ed, thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, that B 24 seen better days. So those will go in the library to be read when able. All right, so we talked about what's going on with the caterum the uh, forward motion being made with the DC-3. Have these kits, I have to look up that Kilocraft kit. And thank you, Ed. Thank you, Chuck. Guys, that's pretty much it for the night. Uh, I've gotten most of the putty off of my fingers now because I forgot to put my gloves on. You know, you, you, you pop the putty, you start putting it in, oh crap, I don't have my gloves. And you start shaping it with a tool, and at some point you're like, you know what, my finger's just gonna work better, sorry, you know, and then you shave everything off again, but uh, is it my imagination is nothing spread putty better than your finger? Don't ask me why. Just does. It's just a thing. Well, guys, take care of yourselves. Appreciate you tuning in. Hope you're having a wonderful evening. As always, model on.